Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Sprouts Farmers Market by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Sprouts Farmers Market is a supermarket chain offering a wide selection of natural and organic foods. The company is headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona and was founded in 2002. It went public in 2013 and currently trades on the NASDAQ. The company sells fresh produce, bulk foods, vitamins, packaged groceries, meat and seafood, deli items, baked goods, dairy products, frozen foods, natural body care, and household items. It operates more than 340 stores in 23 states. A typical store is around 30,000 square feet. Fortune Magazine included Sprouts on its list of the world's most admired companies. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 2.8 billion market cap. They're trading at $24 a share and they have 118 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they're growing their free cash flow nicely from 111 million to 372 million. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. Their net income almost doubled from 2017 to 2020. Revenue is a sales for the company and that grows each year from 4.7 billion to 6.5 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales, Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit, and that peaked in 2020 at 2.4 billion. Then below that is operating expenses, then operating income. Their operating income was nearly 400 million in 2020. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt, then other income and expenses, pre-tax income, their taxes, and the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. And their net income doubled from 2019 to 2020. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. Operating cash flow is a better indicator of a company's financial health than net income. Because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. They generated nearly half a billion dollars of cash in 2020. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. That's between 120 and 200 million dollars a year. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. This company generates a good amount of free cash flow each year, so it looks like they're using that free cash flow to buy back stock. They bought back 200 million in 2017, 260 million in 2018 then 176 million. When a company buys back stock, that decreases the shares outstanding, making your shares more valuable. In 2020, they paid down $300 million of debt, but before that, they were adding debt each year. Let's look at the capital structure. $880 million of equity, $1.5 billion of debt. Their 38% equity, 62% debt. Their WAC is 6.43% and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows. Past year four, that's 7.6 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $6.8 billion. We divide that by 118 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of $58. They're trading at $24, so they're trading at a 59% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is higher than me. They're at $74, so they're saying the stock is 68% undervalued. They have a really low beta, 0.21. A beta of one means the stock moves with the market. This indicates the stock doesn't move too much relative to the market. The stock has gone up 43% in the past 52 weeks, which is better than the S&P 500, which went up 40%. The 52 week low was 13, the high was 28. And the stock is trading above its 50 day and 200 day moving average. About two and a half to three and a half million shares are traded each day on this stock. 
Of the 118 million shares outstanding, 110 million are on float, and they have a really high short percentage, over 15% of the shares on float or shorted. If you invested $10,000 when this company IPO'd, you'd be at $5,900 today. The biggest shareholder is Vanguard at 10.25%, then BlackRock, Renaissance. The next biggest shareholder owns 3.6% of the stock, then last is T. Rowe Price. This is the stock price the last five years, so it looks like it hasn't moved too much. It peaked at about $30 in 2016, now it's at $24. The stock does move up and down, but in a pretty tight range. That's why it has such a low beta. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market's nine, the median is 14. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 9.7, so investors are paying $10 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 0.4. That's a really low price to sales ratio. Grocery stores and supermarkets tend to have a really low price to sales ratio because they bring in a lot of sales, but they have low net income relative to their sales because they have low margins. Price to book ratio is stock price over book value per share. There are 3.2, that's a really good price to book. And book value per share is equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet and have $880 million of equity, $327 million of tangible equity because they have $550 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They can easily cover their interest payments. ROE is net income over equity. They have a great ROE at 33%. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can cover 90% of their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are 170 million of cash and 250 million of inventory. The company seems to be well capitalized. They had 372 million of free cash flow, negative $30 million of working capital. So they have $342 million of funding. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of five other companies in the same industry as Sprouts. And if Sprouts has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're better in PE and price of sales. They're worse in price to book and current ratio. They have a really good ROE, one of the best on the list. They do have more debt than average, and they're much smaller than the average company at 2.8 billion market cap. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 59% discount. They seem to be doing a really good job at adding stores and growing their business. I rank their free cash flow 7 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratio 6 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.